Today in our summer vocabulary, I'm on video number eight. And so we're gonna talk about something new, not nouns, not verbs, but prepositions. And prepositions are fun. But for a long time, I, being dyslexic, didn't really understand a preposition. So I'm first gonna tell you some things about prepositions, and then I'm gonna give you the Latin prepositions. So let's get into that. So I told you we have to understand prepositions to learn what they are. And the first thing we need to learn is what they are not. They are not nouns and they are not verbs. So when we're talking about prepositions in Latin, they will never change their spelling. They only have one spelling, which is great, right? I'll teach you those in a minute. But we first need to really understand what they do in a sentence. They have their own grammatical role. They relate nouns or pronouns to other words and sentences. So the thing about a preposition is it can't stand alone. You can't just have one cookie. You either have lots of cookies or a cookie and some milk, right? They go together, they make a team. So think of your prepositions as teams. You always have to have a preposition and that preposition is always gonna be followed by a noun and that noun is called the object of the preposition. And when they come together to make a great team like cookies and milk, you have a prepositional phrase. So think of it as you have a preposition and its friends coming to make a prepositional phrase. So let me give you an example here. I am with my son. We make a great team, right? And the word with is the preposition. And so I can't just say a sentence like, I am with, you'll say, Alexis, who are you with? I would then have to answer you, I am with my son. I complete that phrase, that prepositional phrase with the word son. Now, in Latin, the word with translates to cum, C-U-M, cum, that is with. And cum has to be followed by an object of the preposition. And in Latin, that would be filio, the singular word for son, filio. I, so, with the son. Now, I said object of the preposition. And if you remember your case song, the ablative ending is going to always take that ablative case, object of the preposition. But let me sing that song once again for you. Um, nominative, subject, genitive, possessive, dative, indirect object, accusative, direct object, and ablative, object of the preposition. Well, that's great. We know exactly which one to use. Yeah, except that I have always told you from the very beginning, there are exceptions to Latin rules. And so some Latin prepositions will be followed by a noun in the ablative case, like cum filio. But some prepositions will actually be followed by a noun in the accusative case. So our words today for our vocabulary have two prepositions that are going to be followed by nouns in the ablative case and two prepositions that are gonna be found by nouns in the accusative case. All right, so let me show you what they are. I just told you we're gonna have four prepositions today and prepositions are going to be followed by nouns. And that preposition plus the noun makes a what? a prepositional phrase. And so the first two prepositions we are gonna learn are prepositions that are followed by nouns in the ablative case. Now, if you can see here, I put cum, and then it says preposition with an ablative. That's shorthand for with an ablative. And it translates to with. What that means is that this preposition cum will always be followed by a noun in the ablative case. That means the noun will have the ablative ending. And so you could say with the son, cum filio, or the next word is in, in with a, an ablative, is in opido. So in translates to in or on. And now you can say, Alexis, why do you have all that stuff on your card? Well, 
Right now, we're just learning that in can take an ablative form and translate to in or on. Later on, I'll show you that there's an exception to the rule, because I told you there's always exceptions to Latin rules, where it will actually take an accusative case. But don't worry about that right now. Just do the top half of your card, a preposition plus an ablative equals in or on, in opido. In is the preposition, in opido, the O ending shows me it's in the ablative case. Now, there are two prepositions that will take accusative case. Even though when we sing the little song, accusative says direct object, in this case, it's not going to be the direct object. It will be the object of the preposition because it's coming after a what? A preposition. So our first one is post. Post translates to after or behind, and it's a preposition plus accusative. And post will always be followed by accusative noun. So that's in why it's important to write your flashcards. If you're confused about why post has an accusative right after it, you can look on your flashcards, right? And so here is a short prepositional phrase, post victoriam. The am is the accusative case. It is correct because it's following the standard of post. Finally, we have propter, and propter also is always followed by an accusative case, and it means on account of. So, number one, make your flashcards. They're orange for prepositions. Number two, make sure you know on those flashcards which case the noun will take when it is written in a sentence. And three, remember, you always have a preposition and an object of a preposition to make a prepositional phrase. Well, that's it for today. I hope you're enjoying learning Latin. Please like and subscribe and share with your friends because they need to learn Latin too.